No Country for Old Men stars Josh Brolin, Javier Bardem, and Tommy Lee Jones. It was written and directed by Joel and Ethan Cohen. It was released on Blu-ray May 22nd, 2012 and runs 2 hours, 2 minutes. I haven't always been too keen on the Cohen brothers. Their films have really been hit or miss with me. While they sometimes tend to go for this weird, dark comedy slash drama genre, I don't particularly find compelling. No Country for Old Men is a straight up drama slash thriller, and I'm pleased to say this movie is something special. It starts with a man being detained and then escaping custody. Then Llewellyn Moss, played by Josh Brolin, out on the plains antelope hunting. When he starts tracking one he hit that gets away, he notices a second trail of blood from an injured pit bull limping away in the distance. He eventually finds a gone bad drug deal full of bodies, shot up dogs, and vehicles. One wounded drug dealer inside one of the trucks begs Llewellyn for some water. Llewellyn tells him he ain't got no water. He finds the drugs and figures what happened. At this point, he's actively looking for any money left behind. He then finds a wounded man sitting under a tree with a satchel. He hangs back for a couple minutes before approaching. Opening the satchel, he finds it full of money, eventually taking it home along with two firearms. And so the hunt for the missing money begins. The psychotic killer Anton, the man from the beginning, is a hitman of the buyers hired to find it. A private investigator is hired to find the missing cash and Anton, who has basically gone rogue. You'll have to excuse me for not reading the novel the movie is based on, but there are a few aspects that aren't very clear. Like why a company is representing clients buying large quantities of narcotics, which I'm assuming is a bank or some other company handling large amounts of money. Also, after Llewellyn goes home with the money and goes to bed, he can't sleep thinking about the man who was asking for water. So against his better judgment, he gets up to bring him some, which is where the chase begins. He's taken by surprise by more dealers and is unable to get back to his truck, where Anton gets his info. You figure he'd think the wounded man would have died by the time he got back with the water, but if anything, it shows that the character has a conscience, and the scene before he leaves home produces one of the film's more memorable lines. I don't come back, you tell mother I love her. Your mother's dead, Llewellyn. Well, then I'll tell her myself. Sheriff Ed Tom Bell, played by Tommy Lee Jones, I expect is one of the old men who this country isn't for anymore. As he decides to retire, he tries to cope and make sense of all the senseless garbage happening around him. Speaking with other sheriffs about how things used to be, and how things are changing. You can tell he's just fed up with it all, but not in an angry way. He's got this confident, sarcastic depression that's oddly calming. But despite all that, on the drug deal crime scene and during the investigation, he does his job flawlessly. He steps into a crime scene and effortlessly notices everything. A sheriff over-observant in his work and the world around him. Well, it's a mess, ain't it, Sheriff? If it ain't, it'll do till the mess gets here. It's a very quiet movie overall, at times serene, but watching Anton hunt Llewellyn down is as suspenseful as any horror film. Javier Bardem does an amazing job playing the psychopath Anton Chigurh. His name's Chigurh. Sugar. Chigurh, Anton Chigurh. The lines he's given really convinces you of the nature of this character. The three main characters display their distinct traits quite clearly. Llewellyn Moss has a conscience. Sheriff Ed Tom Bell is aware and observant. And Anton Chigurh is a psychopath. Woody Harrelson makes a surprise appearance as the private investigator, Carson Wells, who knows Anton. I say surprise appearance because he's only in four scenes, and every time I go to watch this movie, I forget he's in it. This movie is beautifully shot. Both day and nighttime scenes are done masterfully. Most of the country is flat plain, almost desert-like, but it's still very beautiful, with the odd tree and clouds casting shadows across the land. 
It takes place during late 70s Texas, and seems to accurately represent the feel of that time period. The POV scenes through Llewellyn's binoculars are full screen, which I haven't seen often. Usually there's a binocular shape, or some kind of vignette when a character looks through a lens, but you know he's looking through them when they perform a quick cut as he raises or lowers them, quickly sliding in or out the appropriate view. And of course, the view is zoomed in as well. The aforementioned chase that ensues when Llewellyn brings the wounded man some water starts in the darkness of night and transitions to dawn as the chase goes on. It's got a dynamic, contrasting look and feel that's absolutely gorgeous. To expand on that scene and other parts in the film, it presents some really terrifying scenarios you may not think terrifying unless you actually saw them. For example, Llewellyn is being chased by a pit bull. I will admit that does sound scary, but seeing it here, it's terrifying. I mean, this thing is on a mission, and this thing is moving with a purpose. The very short bursts of violence are also very realistic and extremely graphic, enough to send shivers down your spine. Overall, this is a great movie and by far my favorite Coen Brothers film. It may be a slow burn and too slow moving for some, but stick with it. There's no denying the significant feel this movie projects, along with underlying themes beneath the story that are sure to provoke some thought. I have to admit, leaving certain aspects to the imagination of the audience only serves to add more interest to the film as well. 8.5 out of 10.